Yes, we are back on the RS6 in today's video, guys, and hopefully we are going to rectify the issue with the PCB the PCB system um, and get this thing running without smoking at all, really. That is the ideal scenario, but uh, yeah, I'll just talk you through quickly. So she's been parked up here for many weeks due to ordering back-ordered parts, etc. Um, for those of you who haven't seen this car before, then please do click on the top. Well, I can never remember which corner it is. Left hand, right hand corner. Uh, and go back and watch the previous videos for this car. And then you'll find out why we are in this position. So now, just looking at the engine bay, we had um, this... All these non-return valves uh, that lead to the PCV system, they were all either not working or even some of them were completely broken completely. Um, so you got non-return valves to the turbo, both sides, both sides were gone. Uh, so we've got replacement hoses here. Um, the main PCV hose that went across the top here that had been bodged in the previous life and I just got it replaced, uh, this long pipe here. It had been bodged up here somewhere and just had a split in it. Uh, and then we had another three valves going into the intake manifold and also into each head, I believe. Uh, one of those was completely broken and not working and the other two were okay. But I went to work on the car actually. I went to do a video on this last week and then actually discovered that these two other uh, valves were also playing up and not 100% working. So I ended up just ordering another two, one, uh, two valves of those. So we've got one new one here and another two in a bag over there. So we actually have five new non-return valves and this new pipe across here. So there should be no issues with the PCV system um, after today's video. So hopefully we can get all this fitted, go for a start, and obviously there's no oil in the intercooler anymore. So once it's up and running, I'm really hoping it just doesn't smoke and it drives as it should. But I have just remembered we do have that problem with the near side intercooler, which I will need to look into uh, as well. But let's get it running and get some sort of boost and hopefully it doesn't start pissing out oil. Yeah, because it's been many, many weeks since this was last running, I'm definitely going to have to get the old battery on charge because she will be flat. So the first thing that we are gonna do is replace these turbo one-way hoses here, which literally just bolt onto a metal hose that goes to the turbo. So they should be fairly simple to replace both sides. So I'm gonna do that first, and then we will look to replace the long hose here, and these, oh, and those valves as well. So let's crack on. Right, that took absolutely forever to try and get that pipe and those three or five valves in. Uh, must have taken about an hour and a half. It was just so fiddly. It doesn't help having massive hands either. Uh, just trying to get all the hose clips on. Um, I had to put a new one on here because it's just too big and it just won't clamp in the pipe. So trying to fit a new uh, hose clip down, right down in that gap was an absolute nightmare. And yeah, just trying to get all these clips, hose clips onto the one-way valves right in there, right down there as well, behind the PCV valve. It just... Yeah, a bit of a nightmare to be honest. Um, and then I had to actually remember the orientation of all this because it's been a lot of weeks since I worked on it. But this pipe is all now in position. All five valves are all in position. So what I've got to do now is air boxes. Uh, I've got to go in, which the return valves uh, for the pipe turbos go on. You've got two intercooler hoses here as well. And then we've got our hard pipes on the top. So just got to put the air boxes on both sides um, and the hard pipes across the top. And then we shall, I'm going to leave the battery on charge overnight. So I'm going to come back to it in the morning and then it should be nice and fresh. And yeah, ready for a start.
Wow, that was a massive pain in the ass. It was a lot more fiddly putting all this back together. Uh, but now, yeah, air boxes are all in, hard pipes are all in the top. It's just very fiddly. There's a couple of hoses under this hard pipe and they just give you no free play at all to try and get the hoses on and the clips on. Uh, trying to get the hose clips on down there as well, just near on impossible. But we do have new hose all across the top here, all three, all five valves are now in position. Everything you see here is built up. I have just jacked the car up on this side so I can get under and I've reattached both intercooler hoses as well. So there is nothing now stopping me for going, uh, from going for a start. So I have had the battery on charge overnight and I'm hoping that means it shall start. So let's just give it a go. Although I'm not optimistic because, oh, let's just stick the key in. No key identified. There we go, all right. All right, she started. good I think there's no smoke just a bit of condensation that's all right I mean there will be it will it, well it should smoke a little bit purely because there should still be oil in the exhaust system that will need to burn off um, that's fine that's just condensation at the moment so I'm not worried about that so what I'll let it do now I'll just go to the front Away. I'll let it warm up, uh, leave it on idle for a little bit, and then we'll, uh, yeah, we might plug in the code reader, see if there's any codes, and then maybe go for a road test. We'll have to get the under tray on first, though. But yeah, we'll, see, we'll let it go up to temperature. So I've left it idling for about 10 minutes, and good news, look, condensation died down, and there is no undue smoke. Um, I also gave it a couple of blips with the revs, and yeah, there is no smoke coming out, which is good news. And the other, I completely forgot I need a new inside light um, and also the other thing that's good news is the last time this was running there was oil absolutely pissing out there and now as you can see look no oil pissing out at all so we're on to a good start now let's get this thing on the ramp get the under tray put back have a quick little general overview and let's get her on the road so the under tray is all on and I've just obviously brought her outside, letting her warm up a little bit and we're going to take her for a road test. Um, I have remembered actually the near side front um, flexi for the DRC has been replaced. So I'm not going to go too mad because obviously the suspension needs to be recharged. So uh, yeah, we're just going to take it pretty chilled. But the main thing is we're just trying to find out whether, uh, yeah, the turbos are gone basically. But she looks like she's idling nicely. Look, she's warmed up. Can't, well, she's not warmed up, but she's warming up but there is no undue smoke, uh, smoke, just a bit of condensation at the moment. So I'm just gonna set my GoPro up, uh, set this camera up as well. First thing we've got to do is fill her up with fuel and yeah, we'll go for a little road test. Have absolutely no fuel whatsoever. But let's go for a drive and see what she's like. Weirdly, for a car that's done 215,000 miles, like everything is really silky smooth still. Like the gearbox, steering, just feels very, I don't know, just feels smooth. Nothing feels clunky or anything. Yeah, just not what I expect for such high mileage. I'll tell you what, this is a very smooth, very smooth ride. Like the pickup's actually, as you'd expect from a five litre twin turbo, it's very bouncy. Um, no, the pickup's very effortless, it's very smooth. The ride is very smooth, there's no weird noises. I know I've obviously driven this before, but I can't remember really driving it before. It was only a short stint, but. No, oh, okay, thumbs up. No, this feels very very smooth i can see why if obviously money no object you would want a car like this uh to do 200,000 miles in it's just very yeah limo like very relaxing 
Right, we've got some fuel in. I've started recording from the back as well, so hopefully we had a, if there is any smoke, I'll uh, refer to that camera and show you. But, obviously I haven't booted it yet. Now we've got some fuel, I can give it, and it's nearly up to temperature, it's nearly at 90 degrees. So we'll probably just go through this little bit here and then give it a little bit. Um, but there's been nothing so far, but then last time it only did it when I booted it, so I don't know yet. Um, so with the intercooler as well, it's not necessarily the intercooler that was leaking oil. Uh, chances are it probably was, but I'd have thought I'd have heard a bit more of a boost leak if the intercooler was leaking oil like it was. Um, obviously it's, it's a very compact engine bay and down in that near side front, so it looked like it's coming from the intercooler, but it could have been coming from above. So I obviously need to properly investigate that. But for now, it has actually stopped leaking, so I don't know. It's just, yeah, for, for, for oil to be leaking out the intercooler like that, it's got to be a fair sized hole. And you'd have, you'd have heard, uh, thought I'd heard, hear some sort of whistle, boost leak, lack of power, something, but just give it. But I'll tell you what, the pickup is epic. Like, back then, it was quarter throttle, and it, it just felt like wanted to go. I'm just going to slow down. Do I put it into sport? No, I'm going to leave it drop. Right, let's just give it a, give it a little bit. Right. What it was there was like a it was like I was going over rumble strips to start with I don't know if that's the suspension or I don't think it was the road but that picked up big time like that was pulling harder and harder and harder then this is rapid I don't know whether it's been remapped I've never driven one of these standard um, I suppose what's it got 580 horsepower weighs nearly two ton I think it probably does weigh over to actually probably more than two ton so did that feel like 580 horsepower? I don't know. Again. I'm gonna put it into sport this time. Let's go check the back. that picks up it's it's weird it's it's like the first I don't know from like 2,000 to four and a half thousand rpm it, it feels you're like wow this yeah this is quick but four and a half to I don't know what it went up to I weren't paying attention but four and a half onwards you're like okay this is stupid quick right I'm gonna head back before anything breaks Really good note though, there is no oil, well there's no smoke coming out the exhaust, so um, you'd have thought if the turbos are gone, it would be doing it no matter what. So I'm hoping it's just the fact that there was oil in the in the cooler, uh, which is probably built up over time. Uh, that was what it was, obviously the, the higher the boost, the more the oil gets drawn up into the engine and therefore blown out the exhaust because it only did it at uh, uh, like 4,000 RPM onwards, so yeah. It's not doing it, which is good. Right, all back in the workshop now, and I'm, I'm pretty doubtful about the intercooler. Uh, the way it boosted then, there was no noises, it boosted absolutely fine. If there's a hole in the intercooler, enough allowing oil to come out that much, I would know about it. So I'm, I'm fairly confident the oil wasn't coming from the intercooler. So, um, I mean, it's stopped now. So whether I investigate it or not, I should probably have a, a look, but if it's not leaking now and there's no problems, then I uh, don't really know, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, she drove absolutely spot on. Uh, there was no smoke out the exhaust at all. Booted it three or four times and yeah, it is absolutely rapid. Right, so now we're at the stage where I want to get this thing fully road legal and basically in great condition. So I'm going to get the DRC booked in for a recharge, get that sorted out, 
Uh, one of the things I want to look at now quickly is this rear tail light. Um, as under first inspection, it just looked like it needed a new, I'm just going to shut it quickly. Yeah, so obviously you can see the inner one here is just not working at all. So on first inspection, you just assume that it needs a new inner light. However, there are a few things that make me doubt that it is uh, the light that's actually at fault. It may be a wiring issue. So it needs a boot lock looking at as well. But if you can notice, I've got the side lights on, neither number plate lights are working, and only one of the interior boot lights are working. So there seems to be a, an issue possibly on this side. Um, I think the number plate wiring comes from one or the other side. So if it comes from this side, then it may indicate a, a wiring issue, maybe to from here, for example. I don't know yet. So instead of just ordering a light, we do need to diagnose that it is the light that's at fault. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove this boot trim here and have a look underneath. Right, so I've been yeah having a look at, into this. Um, first thing is, yeah, this is gonna be the reason why that doesn't work. So I'm gonna have to buy a new light thing for that because it's all just obviously got wet and completely corroded. Um, then we've got our number plate lights, unplugged them. One of them's got an LED unit in, cheap LED unit. The other one was a bulb that was blown. Um, is that blown? No, that's the new one I tried. Uh, anyway, there's another one that's blown somewhere. Um, I have subsequently tested both of the terminals in each one and there is 12 volts on both, but they are quite corroded, so they might just need cleaning up. Uh, I need to order another couple of number plate lights, but the good news is the feed to them is there. Uh, the feed to this is also here as well. It's just that light unit. So that moves on to the last thing, which is this offside inner towel light. Uh, check the voltages. The voltage is fine. It also matches the voltage from that one, but as a like a, a worst case scenario, if ever in doubt, they are able to be swapped over. So I have just swapped them over, so we can just turn the lights on and test, and obviously if this one works, then we know the feed to it is fine, because obviously that light definitely works. So if, we, uh, if the feed to the light is fine, then this one will also work, uh, and yeah, and that vice versa, that one will stop working. So, light. And there we go, look. Light works absolutely fine. And this one, weirdly, the inner one works, but it didn't on this side, which is odd. I don't even know if that inner bit's part of it. I don't think it is. It might be. I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because the feed definitely works to it. So yeah, we need a new light. So unfortunately, yeah, it's not a wiring issue. I kind of wish it wasn't a wiring issue because those lights are, there's none secondhand. Uh, and yeah, it's about a hundred quid for a new inner light. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to order one of those. But um, yeah, there shouldn't be too much else to do, guys, to get this through MOT and then in a proper roadworthy condition. Uh, and also once it's up to a roadworthy condition, I've got to get it booked in for a rolling road because I need to know how much power this is running. Uh, and maybe maybe a remap, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to push it. I mean, it is high mileage as it is. So as always guys, that is gonna be the end for today's video. So I need to order a load of parts for the next video, uh, get it booked in for the DRC check, and then we can get it road legal. Uh, and then we can go from there with a rolling road, see how much power it's putting out, etc. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy today's video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.